Hello my friends, welcome to episode one of this new nano reef tank build. Now I wanted to start a nano reef tank ever since I saw this video. This is on the Reef Builders YouTube channel. And it was a video featuring a tank by Michael Rice. Back then I was probably in the hobby maybe three to six months. And this tank blew me away. Now back then, unfortunately, I didn't have the means or the funds to to start one. I had my 93 gallon cube and um, I knew eventually I would want to at least give it a shot and see if I don't want to exactly replicate what he did but um, if I could take his ideas and um, hopefully apply it to my tank. So I did say episode one I plan to make this kind of like a mini series kind of like a TV series and we'll see how that goes. But the first things first, we're going to start with the equipment. For the tank, I chose the Innovative Marine Nouveau 25. Now, if you're familiar with the Nouveau 25, it's got really sleek dimensions. Like really nice dimensions for any type of reefer. And what I mean by nice dimensions is when you have a reef tank, at least for me, the more area I have to work with, the more possibilities there are in terms of aquascaping. Um, and there's just so much more space for coral. Now, I wanna do this a little differently than my previous tanks. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know I tend to go overboard and I tend to fill it just to the brim with coral. I don't want to do that with this tank. And we'll see how this goes. Eventually, it could just end up being full of coral, like uh, all my other tanks. But, um, but with this tank, the vision is to, to have a lot of negative space. Hopefully, with the negative space, the coral in there are going to just be showcased just so much more because when you're looking at something and it's just full of stuff, your eyes can't really focus on anything, right? So in this case, we're gonna have areas of different types of LPS and maybe zoanthids, I haven't decided on that. And hopefully by doing that, you'll be drawn to say the Acan area or the Chalice area or the Favia. So I, I kind of got sidetracked, but that's really why I like the Nouveau 25. The dimensions are really sleek. There's also some really famous Nouveau 25 builds that are on um, Instagram. In terms of the equipment, I am using the stock return pump. It seems to be, it seems to be good. Um, it's a DC pump, so it's quiet. And it seems powerful enough for this tank. In terms of filtration, I'm still gonna stick with the filter floss. You guys know I really like the filter floss. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to use macroalgae in this tank. In fact, there's not going to be any macroalgae, no skimmer. So that's it for filtration. I'm going to have mainly mechanical filtration. And hopefully the bacteria will be able to handle the rest. In terms of the power head, I went with the Neuro 3. So when the Neuro 5 came out, I was really excited about it. I was going to get one. However, I started reading about fish deaths. Um, and I'm not sure if that's due to the design, but I saw multiple pictures of fish being actually stuck to the pump. So I, I passed on it. However, with this tank, I really wanted to give the Neuro 3 a try. So the Neuro 3 is a smaller brother to the Neuro 5. Uh, hopefully they've kind of fixed any fish issues. I know it came with a it came with a fish guard, so hopefully that will help. And what I'm really excited with the Neuro 3 is I'm only going to have one power head in this tank. And typically with flow, um, you want random varied flow. And random doesn't mean random at all times. However, if you can vary up the flow over 24 hours, I believe that will actually be really beneficial to your coral. So 
so that's one of the big reasons I've I've got this pump. Um, I haven't had much of a chance to play with it, but I will be releasing an unboxing and my initial thoughts, and I will show you guys when I finally get to it um, what the app looks like and how I can program it to give me a bunch of different flow patterns over 24 hours. And finally, to top it all off, we have one of my favorite LEDs, LED lights that I've owned. Now this is the Kessel AP700. Um, I'm really glad I kept it because I did put it out for sale and I did receive some lowball offers and I decided, yeah, I'd rather keep it than sell it for, for cheap. Like it's a really great light. And I believe you guys are gonna see that. Um, I saw it firsthand when I had it on the reef system. I had it in the frag section. And I could visibly see from day to day any coral that couldn't handle like the highlights or anything like that. I stuck them in the frag section and I could see them color back up. And not just color back up, I saw a lot of growth. So I do believe this is a really good light. Maybe in my mind, not for Acropora, because when I think of Acropora, I'm always thinking about spread. I, I really want that spread, as much spread as I can get. But in terms of any other type of um, coral, so whether it's your LPS or your zoanthids or any type of softies, I've, I've seen this light do a really good job. And that's it. So this um, so what's really funny about this nano tank is I really didn't want to cut any corners and you know what? I forgot one more thing. So one of the biggest things, one of the most time consuming things in this hobby is topping up your tank with fresh water. Uh, making sure that any type of evaporation is countered by your top up. So with this tank, I went with the Tunzi 3155 which is the same auto top off I have in the reef system. So I wanted this tank to be as low maintenance as possible to require as little of my time as possible. And if I didn't have an auto top off, it would be a daily thing. Now, some things are still gonna be daily when there's fish in there, I'm gonna to have to feed them every day. That's fine, like feeding fish, it's not really a big deal. But when you start adding things on top of that, then it becomes a real time commitment. And I already have, with my reef system, um, that's already a big time commitment with YouTube, with family. Um, I don't really have as much time to give to this tank. So I'm hoping with the LPS, the Zoas, everything I put on this tank, including the auto top off, that this tank is gonna be able to eventually run mainly on autopilot. And we'll see how that goes. So if you're interested in the Nuvo 25 or any type of tank in the Nuvo line, you should check out my Nuvo 25 initial impressions and unboxing because that will give you at least a basic general idea of the tank build and what I think of the build quality. Spoiler alert, I actually, I'm really impressed with the build quality. So the last thing I want to talk about is the aquascape. So I live in Canada. I don't have access to a lot of rock. Um, Marco rock is really popular up here, at least accessible. And because I only needed not very much rock, I decided to actually go with um, two little fishies Stax rocks. I bought two five pound boxes and I didn't even use the entire thing because my goal with this aquascape is I want, I don't want just a mountain of rock. I want there to be a lot of crevices, a lot of caves, um, a lot of space for the fish to swim in. I also didn't want, um, like I said before, my plan is not to fill this, my plan is not to fill this aquascape with coral. Well, at least not to the brim. And so to kind of stop myself from doing that, I tried to, I tried to use enough rock so that there was enough area for the coral I was planning on adding. 
However, I didn't want to add too much rock because the more rock you add, the more space you have, like more surface area to work with, the more you're going to feel like putting in coral. So I didn't want to go with that. We'll see how that goes. But um, I'll, as you can see from the aquascape, I, what I tried to do was make some pillars and I wanted it to be viewable from three sides. So what I did was I basically made it like a sloping aquascape where it's really low in the front and then it get, gradually gets higher in the middle and then the back is the highest. So in theory, I, anyone that looks at this tank should be able to see all the coral that are in this tank. So that's kind of a summary of the equipment as well as the aquascaping. My thoughts on the goals I was trying to achieve when I did the aquascape, when I acquired the equipment. One of the funny things is this tank is actually already more expensive than my first tank. Now with my first tank, I did eventually add more lighting and stuff. So eventually that tank did get up there, but just for starting out, this is, um, this is probably going to be my most expensive build for the size of the tank. Uh, if you think about cost per volume, I haven't spared any expenses. Thank you for watching this video. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in any of these Nuvo tanks, you'll want to check out my unboxing and initial impressions of this Nuvo 25. If you didn't get your coral fix, because in this video, it was a lot more about providing you with the background and the context for the future episodes, check out some of my other videos. If you like LPS, check out my frag tank videos as there's a lot of LPS in there as well as zoanthids. And if you're into SPS like I am, although I'm kind of going through some issues right now, check out my 140 gallon tank series because there's a lot of good footage on SPS uh, Acropora that I sadly do not own anymore. But but it's all good. It's all it's all been diarized on YouTube. So check all those out. I'm gonna have links in the description as well as links popping up in these cards while I'm talking. Um, other than that, thanks all for watching. If you're a fellow reefer, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. That also really helps the channel out. Other than that, as always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video, which is going to be next week, next Saturday. Uh, part two of the nano tank build. Until then, take care.